Because what am I here for? Healing. Both, again, healing goes always. Every, it's all inclusive. I can't just heal myself. I can't heal just you. It's healing is both of us, all of us, y'all, <laughs> all of us getting back together. All of us returning to that oneness we call spirit. The oneness we call the allness of life. Oneness we call God. Whatever you want to call it. Now is the time and here is the place when all is good and divine. Why must you worry, put lines in your face, when all that you do is just fine? So, allness of life. Each and every one of you is that life. We have a word, in, especially in Christianity, but especially in spiritual metaphysical circles, a lot of people talk about the Christ. Christ force, Christ consciousness, Christ light. What's that word mean? It really means the allness of life. That's what the Christ energy experience is, is when you experience cosmic consciousness. Is if you experience the totality, the undivided allness of life, which is spirit. That's the Christ. That's the Christ experience, Christ consciousness. And so, so then, oh, the Christ. That's the allness experience of allness of life. It's as a whole. Remember what that man Jesus said, being the Christ, expressing the truth of the Christ, said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. What's that mean? That means each and every one of you is that. Each and every one of you is the life. The whole of life. And once again, that comes back to, I'm still talking about commitment issues. <laughs> that comes back to relationship. Every single relationship we have, which is pretty much everything of our experience here in this divided world, has to be necessarily a relationship. So if you, if you have a problem with committing yourself to all these relationships because you're afraid of dying, afraid of changing, you don't get to heal. You don't get to experience the life that you are as spirit. The whole, the wholeness, the allness of life. Huh. And this is partly why the Christ said, when there's two or three of you gathered, in my name. It's not the name so much, it's in this consciousness of oneness. There I am. The life, the totality of life, the allness of life is amongst those who are coming together, get, gathering together in communication. So a relationship is a gathering together to or three, or more, right? So it takes a relationship, it takes commitment to, it takes an openness of relating and communicating to open that door to eternity, to open the door to the allness of life. Because until we say hello to each other, if we assume or believe we're an individual separate from everybody else, we're putting the eternity and the limitlessness of spirit in a separate container. 
isolating a drop of water from the rest of the ocean. But the moment we open our mouths, we open our hearts, we open our telepathy, you know, and say hello in some form, whether it's through art, music, poetry, writing, speaking, dance, doesn't matter. The minute we, we open up to communicating, which means sharing who we are inside with the outer world, who we are with the person or people that we're with. And the minute we do that, that door to the whole of life opens up between us. And that allness of life starts to shine through. And this is why I said cancer is, as an illness, is an illness that is a community illness, illness of, of many people even the whole world, that gets expressed and manifested through individuals. And that's why there's so much incidence of cancer starting to happen, it has been going on in the world more, as it, you know, more now than ever. Sure, yes, because there's more toxins in the air and the soil and food we eat and everything else, yeah, of course. A lot of people wanted to know, how did you end up getting cancer? <laughs> because my health profile, the way I live, the way I eat, the exercise, everything else, hey, that I'm not a typical person who should be getting cancer. I never thought I would. But, so, people want to know, some of you might have even experienced a little fear of, oh my goodness, if Michael Tamura can get cancer, that doesn't give me much of a hope or chance. <laughs> right? It says, oh God, you know, everybody's getting cancer. No, you got to realize, oh, because I'm who I am. Because what am I here for? healing both again healing goes always every it's all inclusive I can't just heal myself I can't heal just you it's healing is both of us all of us y'all <laughs> all of us getting back together all of us returning to that oneness we call spirit the oneness we call the allness of life Oneness we call God. Whatever you want to call that. It's the undivided, right? So however we go about it, we're all healing. We're here to heal ourselves and each other. And it's not an act of doing something. And this is why Raphael mentioned right in her first uh, message to everyone on the newsletter, please don't try to give Michael a healing or try to do something to fix him. <laughs> he doesn't want to get fixed. <laughs> our, our boy cat didn't want to get fixed either. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and I don't think any of you want somebody, including me, to try to fix you. Right? You've had enough relationships like that where somebody under the guise of, I love you, so I'm going to fix you. What is that? Oh, it's no different than somebody trying to control you. Doesn't give you your space to be. Doesn't empower you. It's very disempowering when somebody has to fix you because you're so incapable. I'm the healer. I'm going to fix you. Right? That's not healing. Healing takes both of us, all of us. So, as the community gets into communication with each member of the community, gets into communication and cooperation, harmony with each other, ah, the person who's manifesting the cancer in their body starts to get well. That's why, you see, I'm doing quite well, 
Raphael even, you know, she sees me 24 seven and she's amazed that, wow, just uh, what? Uh, two and a half months ago, almost three months ago, you were pretty much right at death's door. And now I'm not full steam ahead. And that's why I waited until now to be able to even do this. But I, I taught a two hour uh, Zoom class to the advanced students as a trial. <laughs> they were the experiment. <laughs> they can take it. <laughs> so, and I, I, it took me a, a couple days to recover, but I did very well, right? So, I'm going to, and I've already had Raphael schedule two more of the classes because I like to teach those classes in trios, triplets, right? And I can tell I'm doing so much better because I'm much more looking forward to that. I'm itching to teach more. So that's when I thought, oh yeah, today's a rainy Saturday, foggy, gray day in Roseville. What a great time to be in front of a fireplace, have a cup of tea, and communicate with all of you. Yeah. So, like the word death and dying, a lot of people in the world don't want to talk about it, don't want to really look at it. This is so, oh, that's so far off, you know. Most people are living to be 90 years old these days, so don't even think about it. No, you got to start thinking about it from the moment you're born. And, and as you start to go, oh yeah, what's this fear of commitment? That's at the bottom of all relationships. You can't have a real relationship if you're afraid of commitment. And that's the same fear as the fear of dying. Yeah. Oh, this relationship's gonna kill me. <laughs> right? Oh, killing is not the same as dying. In fact, it's almost the opposite of dying. Dying is forgiving. Dying is being able to let go of whatever you held on to that's just a belief, it's not truth. If you hold on to a false belief, a lie, an illusion. If you hold on to a mental image that's just a mental image in your mind and not the truth. If you hold on to something of this world that's constantly changing, it's not the truth. Then you can't die. As far as the experience of dying from here means returning to wholeness. So if you're afraid of dying, you can't heal yourself. In fact, in the world, most people associate healing with the opposite of dying, right? Okay, I don't want to die, so I'm going to heal myself. Does that work for you? <laughs> that wouldn't work for me. No, I have to be able to have dying so I could heal myself. When I'm not afraid of dying, I can heal myself. Now, that brings up another thing that a lot of people think about when they see someone like me. I'm supposed to be this great healer. Ah, I've healed, in fact, a lot, helped heal a lot of people who had cancer. And some of them, on a miraculous, I shake their hand and their cancer that the doctor says prepare to die and it's gone. Not all of them. No, that's rare, a few of them. Amongst most of the people who came to me for healing from cancer didn't have that kind of a, quote, cure. The cancer didn't go away, but their healing was they got to live instead of 
being bound to just the cancer and that's all they could do is to fight the cancer. Ah, that brings up another thing. In this culture, increasingly, war, you know, it started many years ago, decades ago, war on crime, war on terror, war on uh, cancer, war on drugs. Huh, that's a cultural thing, isn't it? It's just like, we're gonna fight this thing. So many people approach challenges by fighting. But you gotta, for true healing, you have to approach your challenges as the opportunities that opens it up, that, that allows for commitment. You know, if you're scared of commitment and you have cancer, you're not committed to your life. You're going, I want to get away from this cancer. That's resistance. So every single relationship is about learning to die for every single one of us. You get into a relationship, even with a you know, casual uh, acquaintance relationship of somebody at the store that you frequent, that you say hi to, they're the cashier or something, or a store manager, and your whole relationship on an outward physical level might be just saying, oh, hi, yeah, nice to see you, okay, here's your, this is how much it costs, and here's your products. See you again. Or your dentist, or your whatever, dental hygienist, or whatever goes, okay, I'll open my <laughs> And, but boy, every single one's a relationship, and every single one teaches us how to die correctly, to free ourselves from being a hostage here in the mind, okay? So that's why the fear of commitment, the fear of dying, the fear of really being in a part of a relationship. Raphael is an amazing partner to be with for 36 years, 24 seven for most of it. So when the pandemic came along and we're in lockdown, a lot of couples had a hard time at first because they're used to, okay, see you after work or see you for dinner or let's have a date night. <laughs> oh, by the way, you know what Raphael and I do for date, not night, but date day? <laughs> She drives me to the my chemo treatments and sits with me for an hour and a half, two hours uh, for the whole procedure and everything. And that's our date together. <laughs> because she can't really work and I can't. And, you know, we're, we're not doing other things. So, so, uh, uh, and, and the only... I, I don't drink alcohol, so the only cocktail, and she doesn't either, so the only cocktails we have are, you know, me getting an IV. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, I get the chemo cocktail these days. I'm sure that's a lot more toxic than, than alcohol, but... <laughs> oh well, I'm mainlining a, a very powerful drug. Okay, so, and by the way, just to update you, I successfully completed uh, my third round of chemo yesterday. So I'm very happy to report. You can see, uh, I'm in pretty good shape. And the hair, that's not from the chemo. Amazingly, I'm not losing any hair from the chemo because I don't have that much hair to lose. <laughs> so maybe that's the secret of <laughs> how not to lose your hair when you're undergoing chemo is just have it be practically bald first and then you won't have any trouble. But back to that selfishness is essentially what is selfishness? It's, it's life is about me. It's all about me. What's in it for me? Ah, what's in it for me, right? So when you're facing death or dying or prospect of dying, 
that immediately comes up because the ego starts to go, no way am I going to change. I want to hold on to everything. I got these marbles and I worked hard for them. I'm sitting on this pile of gold and I worked hard for them. I suffered a lot for them. I'm not going to let, I'm not about to let it go. That's just the ego. That's what, if we fall for that, we get selfish. What a relationship does, any relationship, we, it opens us up to something, someone other than me. In a relationship, we can't continue to be me, 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 me. Hmm. I was talking earlier about a young woman when she commits to a relationship and, and especially if she decides to have a child, ah, oh, she's first no longer a single independent person who can just do whatever she feels like doing at any time of the day or night. She has a partner to communicate with. And if she ends up bearing a child, oh my goodness, hmm. <laughs> I want to have a full night's sleep, but the baby goes wah wah. Guess what? You don't get to have it your way alone. Me want the cookie, but the cookie has to wait. <laughs> and isn't that what is really meant by there's no greater love than for one to lay down their life for another. Hmm. It's not just about, oh, you gotta be willing to go into physical battle in a war and with the prospect of not returning, being killed pretty high. No, that's not just, that's one thing of laying one's life down for the benefit of another. But every time you change, you're able to let go of what you firmly believed you had to have or else you're not going to exist. That's scary, isn't it, at first? And you go, okay. I love this child enough. I love this person enough. I love my job enough. I love whatever enough to risk it. I'm willing to try this out. Maybe it won't hurt so bad. Maybe I won't get killed if I do this. And so you drop your guard down a little bit and you're willing to let go of something you thought, I gotta have this or else. What's that sound like? That sounds like an addiction, doesn't it? Most of us wouldn't consider that we're addicts, but we are. We're addicted to cer certain thoughts, certain concepts, certain images, certain requirements. Can't be wrong. Oh no, what if I'm wrong? Right? Can't let it go. So be wrong. Okay, here goes nothing. And you try it out, and maybe your critics will say, oh, you really screwed up. But you know inside, yeah, they don't like it, but I'm still here, right? And it opened up something that wasn't open before. So isn't that a benefit? Isn't that a healing? Yeah. So that's the lesson of relationships, really having a relationship. That's the lesson of dying. That's the lesson of commitment. So if you're afraid of any of those, then, oh, you're not the only one. You just don't think of it as you're afraid of commitment or you're afraid of relationship or you're afraid of dying. Look at what you're really afraid of is changing, of dying, of letting go. 
You're afraid of letting go of something that you think is so important. And half the times, you're not even conscious of what, what it is you're holding on to. So you have to risk it and just go through that experience and you'll come out on the other side. You always come out on the other side. If, even if you end up on the other side, you come out on the other side. <laughs> and, and as you come out on the other side of it all, you look back and go, whoa, now I know what I was afraid of. You see, that's, that's how I learn is a, almost always in retrospect. After I do the thing, then I can look back and find out what I was afraid of that was keeping me from doing the thing in the first place. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. But when you're afraid, you want the answers beforehand. You want some kind of guarantee that it's going to be okay if I do this. Hmm. Do you think for one moment I had a guarantee and an understanding that if I go through this chemo thing, I'm still going to be here? Yeah. It made it a little more simple for me because what can I lose? I was already dying, right? <laughs> uh, so it's, it's like that. Then... Oh, that brings up a thing about a lot of people go, Kai, if you're such a great healer, why don't you just heal yourself? Like, bam, right? Abracadabra, and your completely cancer's all gone. Because I know some healers are able to do that. Some people have had near death, one near death experience, and when they come back, their stage 10 cancer is gone. Pretty cool, isn't it? Well, how come mine's not that way? Oh, in fact, I come back <laughs> seven times and then I get cancer. Uh, well, I must be a dud, right? Or a, a failure as a healer. No, you got to look at the purpose of a person. For some people, it's correct to have an experience and the miracle of instant cure, instant everything. And one minute they were dying and the next minute they're completely more alive and healthier and fit and everything than they were when they were 20. But not, that's not true or correct for everyone. How about me? As an example. Oh, yes. I teach always. I teach by example. I don't know any other way to do it. Because I'm not really good at memorizing stuff. <laughs> Especially the older I get. <laughs> uh, so, I can't study scholarly works and, and theories and all kinds of equations and everything else and spit it out to everybody. So I can't really be a professor of academia or something like that. But what I'm good at is really exploring and, and discovering from my own personal life experiences and being able to distill some wisdom out of each one and share that with you. So it's always after the fact. I had to go through it first to find out, oh yeah, this is what I did. <laughs> this is what worked, this is what helped, this is whatever. Then anyone who's going through stuff, it gives them a little benefit of, oh, okay. So that's how it works, or at least that's how it worked for him. Or that's what he experienced, and that's how he's managing it. And it seems to be of some benefit. So the only reason I would be here 
is if I can't be of any benefit, then why should I stay? Yeah. I'd be foolish to stick around when I have no benefit to offer anyone because it's not benefiting me either. Yeah. Only when we're here to benefit everyone do we benefit. Huh. That's why I also said somewhere that God loves a cheerful giver. A giver is one who's here and knows he or she is here to benefit, to be of benefit. Yeah. That's the healer saying, oh yeah, I'm not there yet. But if I could benefit you in some ways, it's going to help me benefit myself as well. We're in it together. Huh. So, if I came back and, or instantly just go hocus pocus and I'm completely cured, would that be some benefit? Yeah, it would be benefit in terms of inspiring. Oh, gee, if he could do it, maybe I could do it too. But my experience hasn't been like that. My experience is, oh, well, he could do it because he's Michael. <laughs> he's supposed to do those kinds of things. And so it's much more beneficial all the way around if I go through the experience and see how far I get. Yeah, it doesn't guarantee that I'm going to completely heal and be, you know, I could jog a mile or whatever and all that stuff or teach at the rate I was teaching before. Chances are probably not going to be that way. But the mere fact that, oh yeah, I'm able to do this. I'm able to write. I'm able to teach some classes at a much slower pace. And with a lot of support and understanding from the students, huh, might be a little bit more benefit in store over the course of however long I'm going to be here. Yeah. And also be careful. Some people who go, oh, I'm going to die any moment now. <laughs> Sometimes they last the longest. <laughs> uh, but whatever time I have here remaining, I'm truly grateful for it. And especially because I get to be of some kind of benefit, I get to share of my experiences with you. So that's what's keeping me here. Uh, I mean, it's, nothing's holding me hostage here. I'm here by my own decision. But this is the purpose for which I'm here. Right? So as I take these steps, and, and so many different things you can look at too, is, is some of you, especially mo many of you who are much more holistically inclined, naturally inclined, uh, spiritually, metaphysically inclined, have a great aversion to allopathic contemporary medicine. Huh. And treatments like <laughs> kind of obviously could be deadly treatments like chemo. And so I thought, well, for me, the decision of going through with this instead of just using herbs and energy work to heal myself is it, it gives me the option to stick around a little bit longer. And the longer I'm here, it gives me a better opportunity, a bigger opportunity to heal myself naturally. Right? It's not sep for me, it's not separate. Medication with a bunch of, you know, supposedly or, or uh, can be harmful side effects and spiritual healing and psychic energy work 
they're not mutually exclusive. I don't care what tools I use to restore my full awareness and experience to the whole and the wholeness of life, to the undivided spirit. That's the real healing. Medicine doesn't heal you. A healer doesn't heal you. Even natural herbs don't heal you. The healing is experiencing, being, recognizing, realizing your spirit. You're already undivided. You don't, that you doesn't need a healing. And the more you become aware of that, ah, everything here, emotionally, bodily, mentally, psychically, starts to get well. Yeah, at least get well enough for you to fulfill the purpose that you have being here. Yeah, I'm, I have no illusions of having to be the next Olympic gold medalist <laughs> in curling or anything. Uh, so, it's like that. And same with Get, regaining my voice to the level where it's not, it's, it's a miracle. But the first thing I had to do was let go of any attachment to getting my voice back. Huh. And what does that really mean? That means you got to be willing to forgive. And of the biggest forgiveness is of yourself, right? Because when we get into trouble, when we get into some kind of pain and suffering, who's the first person we blame? Just even unconsciously. Yeah, we're the ones who, who's experiencing it, so we're the first one to blame. Even when we're pointing fingers at everybody else and the whole conspiracy of evil against us. Huh. But unless we are able to forgive ourselves, we're not going to let go of anything. We're not going to be willing to die. We're not going to be willing to commit. And we're not really going to be willing to have a real relationship with anyone or anything. Because all relationships are meant to lead us back to the limitless. To the entirety of freedom. And then we're done here, in this school of hard knocks, of two-ness. That's all this place is. It's like this grand video game that's meant for educate. What is it called? Edutainment, educational, in entertaining education. And if you can't have fun with that, then you're not going to learn very much. Yeah. Can you? If you get too serious about a video game, you're not going to learn much. You, you get obsessed with it. You, 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 have, you get into competition with the video game. You try to conquer the video game. But if you approach a video game for what it's really meant for is entertainment, then you learn all kinds of skills. You learn all kinds of new things. And ultimately, you learn about yourself. Everything here is about learning to discover who you truly are. So thank you for spending this time with me on Facebook. I know all of you are quite busy and creative and doing all kinds of things that are benefiting the world, benefiting others in your life, your communities. But it was a blessing for me to be able to spend this time with you and let you know I'm doing well. No need to worry. <laughs> because I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this place when I leave this place and not a moment before. All right? So thank you very much. And once again, for those of you who joined us later than the beginning the first and foremost thing I wanted to communicate and share with all of you is my gratitude 
for how much support, how much loving kindness that you've given us, both of us here, Raphael, myself, and some of you, you know, active physical support to help us do things, get things done that we weren't able to do ourselves. And quite a few of you, amazing financial support, support, incredibly generous. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And have a rest of your amazing weekend, even if you're being rained out of everything where you are <laughs> or snowed in. Uh, see if you can decide to enjoy it anyway. And then who knows what will open up for you. So God bless. Take care. And thank you. There's nothing but God's loving grace